Hello, how are you? Um, I would want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our um, series of uh, principles of digital forensics. And um, today we want to talk about um, collecting data evidence, uh, which I think I colorfully called collecting data on my on my notes. The assumption that we we make. Uh, probably or the assumption that we're having before we even start on this one is um, is that you have an appreciation of uh, basic artifacts of um, of digital evidence and uh, probably you have done a bit on um, the principles of collecting evidence the rules of collecting evidence uh, everything that governs you as you as you do so and um, as well you would find out that to today we, we, we just want to get into certain principles we just want to get into certain theories uh, that are very very important when you never you want to to collect evidence and also remember you are collecting evidence probably in different circumstances in, at one time, you would want to do live acquisition. You would want to collect evidence uh, as the system is running. You would want to collect evidence from a very volatile uh, source. And sometimes you would also want to collect evidence from a hard drive, uh, from a non-volatile secondary storage device. Um, so, so you would find that that will also determine the methods that we are that you you eventually get to use. So, in this particular in this particular um, uh, session, we would want to talk about imaging. We would want to talk about uh, collecting memory dams. We would also want to talk about collecting data from the registry, and uh, probably this speaks to to those who do forensics on uh, Windows based operating systems and would want to just mention uh, the basic idea of uh, indexing and, and also searching and uh, probably I need to hasten and say um, in all these uh, these um, techniques I would want you to to prepare at the end of this of this of this of this lecture I would want you to prepare um, a list of uh, the different uh, softwares that are out there, the different tools that are out there, uh, some open source and um, others proprietary. But I would want you to prepare at least at least a list that shows uh, what does what and uh, how it does that. So pick probably three uh, pieces of software that you would want to tell me how they would do imaging how they would do um, memory dumps, how they would uh, do uh, registry forensics, and also how you, you would do uh, indexing using, using that. Now, uh, imaging is, is, is one that is a technique that probably um, has um, surpassed or at least has lived longer than, um, than many of them. And, and, and imaging is is, is a process of uh, of copying a hard drive uh, or any other storage um, the media for that matter and what we're doing there is we are we are copying into your forensic image I'm sure you would appreciate at this stage that uh, what we try to do what we try to do whenever we are collecting our forensic evidence is we don't want to use control C control V we don't want to copy a paste uh, neither do we want to use any other methods of copying. What we would want to do is want to do a bit uh, by bit copy, if anything. We would want to ensure that we maintain integrity. We would want to ensure that uh, there is never going to be uh, a change that resulted from, from, from you copying a piece of, uh, of data from one medium to the other. So to avoid that, we would want to ensure that we, we create um, an express image. Uh, of of whatever we we are trying to, to 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 take as evidence, and in this case, it is a hard drive that we can we are saying you need to to take an image 
that you can eventually then get to use uh, for forensic examination. Also, it is very important to appreciate uh, that uh, that the image will be subjected to to scrutiny. Would want to to know whether it is actually an express image, uh, whether that particular image cannot be altered or could not be altered or was not altered at least. So one important aspect of uh, a forensic examination at least is to ensure that the actual data that was on the hard drive is not compromised. So we always want to ensure that it is actually the, the exact um, data that was, that was on the other medium that you, you managed to, to create an image of. So what can be used in this case? Uh, you can use an F2K imager. And uh, here we, we you would find when you're using that particular imager, there are DD, Smart AFF, um, and EO1 uh, files that are supported by the FTK imager. And uh, you can then then take a look at those, and you'd find out that uh, your DD is your, your pure bit stream, and uh, your Smart is more on the commercial side, and it's really used in the field. And then uh, you have uh, AFF, which is an independent file format that supports encryption and compression. And uh, the EO1 is one that is used um, commonly. And uh, you would find uh, that was developed by Guide and Software, uh, who are the creators of NCASE. And it's very, very important for you to, to, to appreciate to appreciate that as well. You can use... Um, uh, some software like you recover, you want to share, etc., to try and make sure that at least you create an image. Now, that that was when you were collecting from a secondary storage uh, medium. What if you are trying to collect from memory? You are doing memory forensics, and uh, you you know that it is pretty volatile. What do you what would you want to do? You'd want to to do what are called memory dams. And um, what you are trying to, to, to get is you're trying to get uh, from memory, you're trying to get the memory contents, you're trying to get the page files. And uh, this, is, this is very, very you know, important um, uh, to, 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 to really go through, sit down and, and plan because you, you don't know, you don't know how much of the memory is going to be important or how much of memory is of forensic value. And... Uh, you 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 also want to appreciate that uh, when you are doing a memory dump, a memory dump is one is done in such a way that uh, it is stored as one big huge file, and because of that you don't want to start uh, to start a memory dump and all of a sudden you realize that you you do not have enough memory to actually to actually dump it. So it's it's important for you to to plan for it. It's important for you to appreciate how it works, and. Um, also, another important thing to appreciate is that uh, whenever you are doing it, whenever you are doing it, sometimes there can be there can be a limit. There can be a limit to 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 how much memory you can actually dump, and that sometimes depends on the file system that your system is using. For instance, your uh, FAT32 file system can only store files. Uh, of 4 gig of data that is one huge file 4 gig of data or less so you cannot you cannot you cannot you cannot you cannot you cannot then damn memory that is that is bigger than that so you need to know you need to know uh, the characteristics you need to know how to do it you need to know what are your limitations when you are trying to do a memory dump and uh, there is also then um, one that is known as a di uh, direct memory access attack and what this does is um, it, um, it it exploits the firewire, and uh, as we as we do exploitation of the firewire, what we are trying to do is we are trying to gain uh, access to memory contents uh, through the uh, 1394 um, IEEE interface, and um, what we eventually then get to to, to 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 look at there is we want to look at the different connectors that you'd find. Uh, out there, we have our PCI, we have our PC uh, card, we have our Thunderbolt, uh, etc. But all that we, we 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 are doing is we are using those particular ports, we are using those particular connectors as a way of exploiting um, uh, the, the way that they can give us access to memory. 
but apparently we can only then uh, read banks that are that are four gig uh, the lower four gig um, gigabytes of, of that realm we should not be able to, 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 to read much and that's one disadvantage that we have when you're using DMA it is that you can only you can only view certain banks of, of, of memory and you cannot view the other so um, one of the two that 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 can actually that can actually be used for for, for a DMA attack is inception and is apparently uh, open source you can uh, look at that as well so like I had already mentioned uh, the problem that uh, we have with DMA is that um, normally you can only gain access to the lower four gigabyte of your RAM and um, you find today we are looking at people using 8 gig RAM, we are looking at people using 12 gig RAM and that means you'd have missed out on a huge chunk of RAM there if you are to use uh, DMA. And the other thing is uh, because of technology you'd find uh, quite a number of operating system vendors are now developing more and more defenses against DMA attacks. So it's, it's, it's hard uh, uh, for, for us as a forensic examiners to, to succeed um because because there are many many more ways in which they are trying to block that out now we can also use cold boot attacks and uh, this is basically when you freeze memory modules and um, what you're doing is you you're freezing memory modules you reboot uh, uh, the victim computer and you use probably USB uh, to make it uh, boot a small process uh, designed to dump contents of memory so uh, that is called a cold boot attack. Um, so we use that as well to try and make sure that we collect contents of memory. And uh, this this is this is this is largely this is largely uh, possible because uh, of the way in which memory is made. Um, I know we 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 we've been taught that uh, memory is highly volatile, but it is not as volatile as that. Uh, sometimes data lingers. Data link as is, 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 is memory as is memory modules um, 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 uh, switching off. So what happens is when you then when you then when they are then cooled down, you find out that there is then uh, data linkers even more. So data linkers even more. So 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 that's why we call it a cold boot attack. So it then makes it possible that we can actually we should be able to then to then to then to then reboot. And uh, and we are booting probably from um, uh, an external uh, booting device, and then and then we should be able to then collect collect uh, the contents of memory. So that's a cold boot attack, very very important. Of course, it is also its own disadvantage. Um, that's um, while we can actually get uh, full content of memory, it should be noted that it's more intrusive than the other ways of collecting memory and remember why we avoid uh, as, as forensic examiners or as those who collect evidence who always want to avoid uh, being too intrusive who we'll always try to make sure that at least we are not um, too intrusive we do not change much on the victim's computer it's very very important to appreciate that and uh, this one can then start doing modifications of the BIOS, which probably someone was going to find valuable as a, as a forensic artifact. And um, and and also you are now using um, a stick, but of course, of course, one can say it's not going to change much. But all that we're saying is it is more intrusive. Now we then get to collecting uh, data from the registry, and uh, and this this is pretty pretty important especially for uh, examiners who deal with uh, Windows systems because Windows systems revolve around the, the registry it revolves around the hives it revolves um, around uh, your your registry keys it revolves around all those those values so you need to be able to analyze the registry so for you to do that at least there should be a way in which you can actually collect the hives you should be able to collect the hives and um, collecting of hives is normally very very easy to do and uh, if you are if you are examining a forensic uh, image of a computer the the hives should be stored um, as, as files in the system partition so it should be able to then just find should find the hives they are stored as a file 
and uh, th that's the location that they are found in the in the config folder of the geosystem 32 and, uh, and and that's also one very 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 important file at least to note as well that is the nt user dot date so so all that we're saying here is uh, we should always get methods in which to analyze your registry and in which to collect data that was in the registry now just just to recap uh, or just to go through one particular process that is called live examination i think i've i've talked about this a lot and this is what we're talking about what necessitates um, live acquisition of uh, of um, your evidence and uh, this is when you are looking at um, you want uh, to collect evidence as someone is working you want to collect evidence from memory you want to collect evidence probably from a router you want to collect evidence from a very volatile source and uh, you want to do that as the system is actually is actually running so you so it's very very important to appreciate and to plan and to know what you are supposed to do so what you want to do when you're doing live examination is you want to capture as good information as possible and you would want to capture what is on screen as early as possible so that it doesn't disappear you also want to capture information about other devices of interest early on so that they stay up if you find any you really would want to ensure that uh, the computer will not go to sleep mode or at least uh, it's not going to be tempered with remotely yes you want to to also ensure that uh, there are no dead switches uh, there is uh, nothing that is controlling uh, the computer remotely as well as you do live uh, examination now there is a technique that is called indexing which is very very important as well and um, and indexing is a technique where you create an index of a forensic image and when you do that, when you do that, uh, you would want to ensure that the data on the hard drive is seen in an alpha numerical form. So it's very, very, very important uh, for you to, to appreciate this. So data is read from the beginning to the end, and all cohesive strings are listed in the index. And um, this, this, this indexing is very, very, very important for you to be able to to analyze and for you to be able to read contents from a, a small uh, secondary storage device uh, to the to the biggest of them all so normally normally the resulting index is useful in in these two ways that you can use the index to do fast searches for keywords and you can also use the index for you to do password cracking that means you should be able to then do the indexing to also to also crack passwords so that's very 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 important to actually do that that is indexing and uh, this this is just showing you uh, from an FTK a screenshot uh, how you can actually do uh, the indexing there I'm sure you can see there where it's talking about indexing options and uh, you uh, uh, there are settings there, letters, how the letters are supposed to be, and uh, the the maximum word length, um, uh, how you what coding you are using for your for your indexing. Uh, those are the spaces. How are they going to come out, and what it is supposed to ignore, and 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 all that. And afterwards, you should be able to then say okay, and then it does the indexing of an image for you. So it's very very important to appreciate how to to do to do that, and then we then get to searching. Of course, you would appreciate that uh, when we're talking about indexing, we say it one of the important things why we would want to do indexing is that you can actually do a search. Uh, we say you can do a search, and you can also use it for password cracking. So when it gets to searching, uh, what we are just saying there is um, there are two ways in which you would want to to search. Uh, you want to do what is known as a live search or you want to do an index search and uh, I'm sure an index search is self-explanatory all that is saying there is um, you are now uh, searching through an index you are now searching through an index so, so the appreciation that we are having uh, there is uh, that you would have um, you'd have created the index and now you're searching uh, from an index and then you can actually do a live search and uh, this one you are submitting the words you are submitting expressions you want to search 
and then the software will search the image um, you are examining from beginning to end so that's called a live search uh, you're not uh, the one select, uh, searching directly in the index so we also then have uh, two options normally when we do our search we do search um, regular expressions or we search um, uh, exact words or search exact words and um, this this is what we have when we're using regular expressions you would want to to search from a to z in small letters and you want to search from a to z in capital letters and uh, you're saying may you please search anything that matches that uh, so it goes through and searches and then if you want to search um, probably just what that which matches lowercase letters you do want that um, a to z which is in your in your square braces if you want numbers and so forth so this is when you are actually using uh, expressions, regular expressions, that you are generalizing whatever you would want to search, and then it goes through and searches whatever matches that uh, regular expression. So I'm sure you can actually see that uh, this is in contrast with uh, uh, with what we were saying is an exact word where you're actually typing the exact word that you want to search. So that's uh, just uh, a continuation. Of how you can actually uh, search everything, uh, any name, any name that uh, uh, probably you are not so sure about the spelling of Joachim, but you are so sure that somehow there should be a J and there is a K, uh, I and M at the end, but you are not so sure what comes in between. And then you try to generalize. If you find an O there, please return. If you find an O A, please return. And you are even using that as a wildcard. Where you are using that as direct to say uh, if there be any letters that um, that are added to that bit uh, please please return that particular search as true so that's that's you using regular expressions to to search and to go through to go through your 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 your, your, your search so that's that's it about um, uh, collecting data that is about collecting evidence uh, let meet in our next session